We have a special guest in the studio with us, Joe. Chris Moran of Solar Negotiators is here. Well, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking over the last, um, well, a few months, a year, about NEM 3.0. Yeah. And um, so what, but what other things are going on in the world of solar today? Well, uh, I mean, NEM 3 changed the landscape for our industry here in California. Your business so, as yeah, a whole. Absolutely. Yeah. Assume I'm a moron and you'd be right. Sure. What's NEM3? NEM3 is just how they've changed the value of power that mm. goes to the grid and how okay. they credit you for that value. Okay. They used what to they give you full pay credit. you back. Yep. So this is from PG&E. They've, they've deem this it, NEM3. It's a, it's a statewide. It's from okay. the California Public Utilities okay. Commission. So all the big utilities have to follow this process. Okay. Um, what's happened recently is, you know, a lot of folks kind of feel like they missed the, the boat. Hey, I didn't get my lock-in under the NEM2, mm-hmm. and I, I still want solar, but I don't understand how the numbers work. Um, luckily, I mean, I hate to say it, it's because the utilities keep raising their prices every year. I mean, yeah. we, we see 22%, you know, increases, requests, it's, it's annually. So as that cost continues going up, solar under NEM3 actually still makes a lot of financial sense. Mm. You just have to pair it with enough battery storage. You've okay. So install- now it's a two-step factor. Exactly. Instead of just getting solar on yep. your home, now today if you're going to go install it, you need to yep. be sure to put in that battery pack as well. Exactly, because you want to keep that power from escaping to the grid okay. at very low cost. So you mm. either want to consume it by running your laundry or your pool pump while the sun is up, or store it and then consume it later in the evening during the peak hours. And if you can accomplish that, you can actually save quite a bit of money. One of the big changes recently, it really has to do with the interest rates. These these increased interest rates have increased the cost of going solar because mm. most customers, I'd say 60 to 70 percent, will take advantage of a financing option, a, a no money down loan, fixed interest rate over 15, 20 or 25 years. And then they take tax credit benefits. They might apply them. But long story short, People are looking for monthly savings. They want to say, what's my power bill now? Mm -hmm. What's it going to be after this is installed? And uh, uh, a loan has been the way most people have gone because they want to own their system. Mm. Some changes we're seeing recently are leases and power purchase agreements, third-party owned systems that were more popular from like 2010 to 2017, uh, where you don't own the system itself. You essentially pay a reduced monthly rate. Sure. They just want the savings. So they're fine with it. I mean, three years ago, you could go to a bank and get a nice fixed 2.99% interest rate over 20 years, and the numbers looked real good. Does that factor in with the batteries, though? It does, yeah. So our package you know, includes, and, and so companies that are doing solar right under NIM3 include those batteries. Mm. And so you've got your, your balance of solar production, battery storage. You get a tax credit on the total. But people are saying, hey, this is more expensive. I'm not sure I want to take out a big loan that's going to be on my credit, and what if I move? And, and so, so that's bringing back some of these lease and power purchase agreement right. options that were more popular several years ago. So so when you're going to the table on this one and you're looking at how have interest rates affected this, by the way? Uh, hugely, just because you're talking about um, essentially a home improvement loan option and, mm. and most solar companies can offer those. You know, it might take what, what used to be a $200 monthly bill over 20 years up to $290 because yeah. it's just it really affects. And when you're looking at someone who is focused on that savings number, right. that's driven it. So it, that combined with the NEM3 uh, policy has has really meant kind of a I, I want to say a downturn for the solar industry, but it's definitely uh, kind of consolidating. Well, let me let me turn this to politics on you because sure. you're on a political radio show. Uh, <laughs> why? And he just loves talking politics. Yeah. So yeah. let me. Why would California do that? Because like, yeah. doesn't this doesn't this go against their let's be green, yeah. let's turn everything electric? Because this wouldn't. And I can be wrong. I would assume solar is helping PG&E in their very unstable grid. grid. And that's that really comes down to grid um, stability. It's actually what it is. California has so much solar installed, we actually have more than we can use. And the utility companies have trouble distributing that generated power where it needs to go. And you, you oftentimes will also have conflicting... That's alarming. Because yep. if we keep hearing that we don't have enough energy... Yep. 
but we do, and they we haven't have learned how to we know manage it. it. Right, right. And that really kind of leads into a separate conversation with electrification and, and smart automation, where mm-hmm. the ability to control when you use certain loads, like, again, your laundry or pre-cooling the house or having an electric water heater that can maintain the temperature and get it up to where it needs to be while the sun is up. Mm-hmm. If we can consume more of that power while the sun is up, then the grid doesn't have to distribute it. You know, just to, not to cut into yeah. you, but you know, for Joe, along our terms, right? When I think of the battery power, now I'm I'm waiting for it. it gets more affordable yeah. as time goes on, yeah. but it gives you actually the homeowner the the power yeah. over your electricity. It's like DVRing your power. Exactly, yeah. that's exactly what it is. Okay, and so you don't even have to turn to PG and E. Yeah. The, you you've got it. You if, if for for many systems we can put sufficient uh, production on the roof for the solar panels and enough battery storage and wire up a transfer switch where someone could essentially run with the main grid yeah. turned off. That's not as common as you might think. But you could really but you people, could go off that the grid. Want. Would that mean yeah. that PG&E can't charge me if I have the main grid turned off? So you would still pay their minimums. And it, it makes sense to have access to the grid. It's sure. gonna, that's always going to be the case. And there's there's some new fees that California is rolling out for what? all utility. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> big surprise. No fees. The, the legislature there's more? <laughs> no <required. way. laughs> The, there's a there's going to be essentially a tiered rate based on income that yeah. one, that came from the legislature so that did that is happening I didn't, is, that, that is happening the decision yes. is going to be well it's good to be working in radio <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> just hint what our pay is no we'll see where that goes it won't go into effect until 2026 but there's a lot happening and frankly consumers they they get kind of tired of all of these you know fixed charges and requirements and and taxes on just the ability to use their power. But when you go back to the policy for NEM3, what it does is it drives investment in batteries on the customer's side of the grid, mm-hmm. which helps stabilize the grid. Now, I'm not a huge P&G and E fan, but this was a necessary change to the industry because the, the structure it had before was not sustainable. Okay. So, All right. So, so we've, got a, we've got a call here, 490-5858. Yeah. Oh. And we always get a couple of calls when you're on, Chris. Yeah. And I, I know you're ready for anything. So, uh, <laughs> Danny, thanks for calling. You're on KMJ. Well, thanks for taking my call, guys. My my question was, um, so I've got like 28 panels on my house. My house is a little over 3,000 square foot. The first, you know, couple of years, I didn't, I didn't have a true up charge, um, but the last three or four years, I've noticed it's gone up. This year, it was a little over thirty three hundred dollars. Wow! Wow! Um, what? Yeah, I know. And it was like I, I'm okay with six hundred, twelve hundred, nine hundred, <laughs> but this year was excessive. Now, what? I'm just curious. Is there anything that I what? What would be the best thing or easiest thing for me to do? Um, what, to let me let me floor. ask you really quickly before Chris pipes in. When was the last time you had them cleaned? Well, that that was at the beginning of the summer, so okay. probably like March, April. And okay. I got to admit, I have gone about nine, ten months. Uh, so yeah, I mean that. I know that's one thing that uh, I have to do. I just want to throw that in before Chris goes. Okay, Chris, go ahead. Yep, great <laughs> question. So I would break that into a few parts. First, we'd want to make sure your system is producing the way it should. Once we establish that and we can confirm, hey, it's doing what it's supposed to do, we'd want to take a look at whether the usage habits may have changed. Things like adding a spa, an electric car. Uh, One of the major things we've seen with our customers and really across the board, the last few years, except for this year, have been exceptionally hot. So when you're running that air conditioner at the same temperature as prior years, but it's hotter outside, that's just going to burn a lot more power. And we have clients who had true-up bills where their production is the same, their consumption is about the same, and they may have a few hundred dollar true-up bill from 2015. But what happens is a lot of their consumption is in the peak hour rates, and the Mm. increases in cost from the grid over that period of time have been substantial. So you're Mm. talking about doubling of the cost of the power you are pulling from the grid. As far as options... You can look to to reduce your consumption through some efficiency upgrades. 
Um, we can add some solar to the system, but it's limited without triggering your NEM2 protection. Right, right. Um, or if you want to do enough addition, we can actually add a larger system and batteries, accept the NEM3 policy, and then help get you closer to a, a $0. So deal. what does uh, Danny need to do if he wants to reach yeah. you to, you know, Yeah, to, to give us a call. Things. You can call us at 447-1557. Uh, we're happy to help you out, and there's a lot of good companies in the area that would be happy to as well. Yeah, I, I, I can say that a, a phone call, uh, Solar Negotiators installed the solar that's on my home, a full disclosure, but they monitor, they they maintain, and very easy to work with. Um, my husband deals with you guys just because, well... I don't know. I make him. And, <laughs> but um, my wife would deal with you too. She's the handy person. Yeah, yeah. Family, so. I was just gonna say. I, he, I just think that he probably asks the better questions than I do. Um, and very easy to deal with. Thank at you. least on four four seven one five five seven. That's it. That's yep. a good number because you can remember it easily. That's you right. can four four seven one five five seven. There, we're there you go. Out. We're we're yeah. Out. Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's it's interesting because as you head into now this NEM three policy, mm-hmm. uh, really quickly because the batteries interest me. Yeah. But how much have the prices on batteries gone down? The, Are we seeing? Yeah. yeah. Like when's my sweet spot going to be, Chris? Uh, it, I, that, <laughs> and, the cost of the batteries have come down substantially just in the last two years. Mm-hmm. I expect them to come down even further. Tesla sure. really kind of drives that market. Yes. Everyone thinks of Tesla. Mm-hmm. It, Tesla doesn't make the best batteries. I hate to break it to some folks out there. Their chemistry is not the best. They're really made. And I'm not knocking Tesla. I'm just saying that when you stack them against some other battery options for your home, they're not necessarily the best option. Um, but it's going to be something that a lot of folks want to add because they're curious the, uh, the concept of independence from the grid is very yeah. appealing for most people. And once you realize, hey, I've got the ability to produce power on my roof, why wouldn't I be interested in taking my house to become grid independent? That is a much more... Do you guys add batteries to any system? We do. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, literally this conversation came up with uh, my co-senior pastor at our church, uh, Ryan. He's like, I need to add a battery to my grid. And I'm like, I don't get it. Because it's solar. I don't understand. But now he explained it to me. Right. But I know he at one point he was looking for like who adds batteries. Right. So even so even if it's not your uh, system, you guys will add batteries. Yeah. And battery technology is it has caught a few solar companies off guard. They're just mm-hmm. not prepped for it. They don't have the staff or the training. So over the next six months, we're really going to see a shift when it comes to providers of solar and battery storage. Many of the companies that we see may go back to what they did prior to getting into solar. There's just going to be some shifts. Um, but it's it's kind of the new norm. I, I, we're kind of telling everybody that chapter one of the solar story just ended mm-hmm. after 12 years or so. Chapter two begins and will run through the rest of the decade. The rise of NEM3. Yeah, exactly. That's chapter two. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh I like that's like the title of a movie or a book right there. Nice. Chris, thank you so much for your time this Thanks morning. For me. Okay, Chris Moran, Solar Negotiators. Again, if you miss the number, 447 1557. If you have questions about your system, whether they installed it or not, they can evaluate and help you out with things. Or if you want a system, they can help you through that too. And battery, which is, you know, very interesting to me.